What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to prepare a new exam topic, this time about a fast-paced life versus slow life. I've got two more videos like this one, one on consumerism and minimalism, and another one on social media. If you're interested, check them out. You can find all the links in the description box. So today's lesson will be comprised of three parts. First, we're going to learn some vocabulary to talk about a fast-paced life. In the second part of the lesson, we're going to look at vocabulary to talk about a slow life. And to finish, I'm going to give you 13 tips on how to slow down. Are you ready? If so, grab your vocabulary notebook and a pen and let's kick off. So let's get started. Today's world is very fast. And first we're going to learn some vocabulary to describe today's pace of life. The first adjective on my list today is fast-paced. And we can use it with life, a fast-paced life. Also lifestyle or society or culture. Number two, a hurried life. One simple sentence, living a hurried life could be harmful to your health. The third adjective, a day-to-day -day life. It's another way to say an everyday life. Number four, we've got a C1 adjective, hectic. It means busy and fast. For example, many people like the hectic pace of New York. Number five, chaotic. For example, my life is a bit chaotic at the moment. And now I'm gonna give you five synonyms for tired. For example, you can say drained or worn out, weary, burned out, or wiped or wiped out. Now we're going to look at some synonyms for busy. We can say swamped, overloaded, overworked, overstretched, tied up, slammed, and three idioms to be as busy as a bee, to be snowed under, and to have a lot on your plate. I've got a video about this idiom. If you're interested, you can click on the card and all the links are in the description box. And now some synonyms for stressed. We can say distressed, under pressure, Tense, on edge, also overwhelmed, anxious, and flustered. Flustered means you're nervous because you have lots of things to do or you are in a hurry. And the last adjective, to be obsessed with something. For example, with efficiency or productivity. Now we're going to learn three nouns. The first one, hustle and bustle. It means busy and frenetic activity. For example, I like the hustle and bustle of a big city. Number two, angst. It's a feeling of worry and anxiety about personal problems. For example, active listening can reduce teen angst. And the third noun, a nervous breakdown. It's a mental health crisis that results in anxiety, stress, difficulty in sleeping and a feeling of great sadness. One simple sentence, she suffered a nervous breakdown as a result of overworking. And now we're going to learn six verbs. Number one, to be short on time. For example, gotta go, I'm short on time. Number two, to be pressed or pushed for time. It means to have a small amount of time. One simple sentence, I can't stay long, I'm pressed for time. The third verb, to rush through your day. It means to do things in a hurry without paying much attention. For example, a lot of people rush through their day without being present. Number four, to be in a hurry or rush. It means to do something very quickly. For example, you're always in a hurry. Number five, to do something on autopilot. 
It means to do something without thinking about what you're doing. For example, we should observe our surroundings and be present instead of doing everything on autopilot. And the last verb, we can say to scarf, scarf, or to inhale food. It means to eat something very quickly. For example, he scarfed his lunch and got back to work. And now we're going to learn two phrasal verbs. Number one, to run out of time. It means to have no more time to do something. One simple sentence, I'm running out of time. And number two, to gulp something down. It means to eat or drink something very quickly. For example, he gulped down his coffee. And to finish the first part of the lesson, we're going to learn 11 idioms. I love idioms. The first one, to run around or round like a headless chicken. It means to be busy doing lots of things, but in a way that is not effective. For example, you need to focus and stop running around like a headless chicken. Number two, a British idiom, to be under the pump. It means to feel a lot of pressure. For example, I'm under the pump to meet all the deadlines. The third idiom, to burn the candle at both ends. I've got a video on this idiom, so you can check it out the same by clicking on the card or in the description box. Number four, to race against time or against the clock. It means you have to finish something very quickly because you have a limited amount of time. For example, racing against time is very stressful. Number five, to be at breaking point or to reach breaking point. It means to have too much stress or difficulties and can no longer deal with the situation. One simple sentence, I'm at breaking point and must do something about it. Number six, to be run off your feet. I've got a video made in Copenhagen, so check it out. Number seven, the red race. It's a way of life in modern society in which people compete with each other for power and money. For example, I decided to get out of the red race and take a slower approach to everyday life. Number eight, to work yourself into the ground. It means to make yourself ill or tired by working too hard. Number nine, to have a lot of irons in the fire. It means to be involved in too many activities and projects at the same time. For example, I can take on this project because I have a lot of irons in the fire. Two more to go, number 10, to bite off more than you can chew. It means to try to do more things than you're able to do. And the last idiom in this part of the lesson is to run behind schedule. It means to take longer than expected. For example, I'm stressed out because I'm running behind schedule. And now we're going to move on to the second part of the lesson to learn some vocabulary to talk about a slow life. First, let's look at some useful adjectives. The first one, slow-paced living or life. We can also say balanced, also low stress or mindful. Number two, chill. It means relaxed. For example, the city has a chill vibe. Number three, a great adjective to describe someone who is easygoing and relaxed, laid back. For example, it's a pleasure to deal with laid back people. And a C2 adjective, soothing. It means making you feel calm. For example, I'm gonna run a soothing bath before going to bed. And now let's move on to some verbs. Number one, this one, I think it's super useful to get your priorities straight. It means to prioritize and to understand which things are more important to do. For example, you can do everything. You need to get your priorities straight. Number two, to put the brakes on. It means to slow down 
or to stop an activity. For example, you should put the brakes on working overtime. Number three, to clear your head or your mind. It means to stop thinking or worrying about something. For example, walking along the beach helps me clear my mind. Number four, to pace yourself. It means to organize your life and activities so that you don't have too much to do. One simple sentence, pace yourself and ditch unimportant tasks. Number five, to take time off. It means to be absent from work temporarily. Let's put it into a simple sentence. He had to take time off because of stress. Number six, to make time for something or someone. It means to find time to do something or be with someone in spite of being busy. For example, it's important to make time for yourself. Number seven, to pamper. It means to treat someone with extreme kindness, attention or care. For example, I pampered myself with a facial. Number eight, to take it easy. It means to rest and relax and not to do very much. For example, I'm not gonna stress out. I want to take it easy this time. And number nine, I recommend watching one video of mine on 15 synonyms for to relax. The same, the card, and all the links are in the description box. And to finish the second part of today's lesson, we're going to learn four phrasal verbs. The first phrasal verb, I use it a lot, and it's to rest up, which means to relax. For example, have a lovely weekend and rest up. Number two, to slow down. It means to be less active and relax more. For example, the doctor told him to slow down. The third phrasal verb, to cut down on something. It means to do or use less of something. For example, I want to cut down on my screen time. Number four, to free up time for something. It means to make time for something. For example, I need to free up time for sport. And last but not least, number five, to set aside time for something. It means to keep time for a special purpose. For example, try to set aside time for yourself. And guys, before we continue, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel and remember to press the bell icon so that you get a notification when there is a new English bit. Thank you very much. And now let's move on to the third and the last part of today's lesson in which I'm going to give you 13 tips on how to embrace slow living. So living a slow-paced life doesn't mean doing things in slow motion, but doing those things that are really important and at the right speed. So the first tip is to pick up a meaningful hobby that brings you joy. It's really important to spend your free time doing things that you're passionate about. In my case, I love going for a walk while listening to music, traveling, doing yoga, swimming, and being in nature. The second tip, schedule your favorite activities. It means making room for your favorite activities in your agenda. Decide when you're going to do them. And in this way, it's gonna be much easier to make a new hobby part of your routine. The third thing we can do is to free up time for cooking a good square meal. You can light a scented candle, put down your phone and eat mindfully, enjoying colors, flavors, aromas and textures. And of course, it's always nice to share a delicious meal with your loved ones. Number four, find your happy place. I think that it's a great idea to have a zen spot where you feel at ease. In my case, it's in Javia, near La Calablanca. 
Number five, get in touch with nature. Spending time in nature is very soothing and it helps unwind and find balance. In my case, I like going to the mountains as well as beaches. Number six, meditation. I think it teaches us to be here and now instead of ruminating about the past or worrying about the future. It helps me be more present and I meditate with the app called Headspace. Number seven, journaling. It's something I want to take up because one of the advantages of journaling is that it relieves stress. Because by writing down our fears and worries, we free up our mind to think about other things. It can help you clear your head, reduce stress, achieve your objectives, improve your memory, to name but a few. Number eight, another way to slow down is by reading a book. More often than not, we replace reading books with social media. And when we read posts on Instagram, for example, we tend to do it very quickly. Slowly reading has a bunch of advantages. It increases our attention span and brings greater enjoyment, as time is needed to notice small details. On top of that, it reduces stress, slows memory loss and improves concentration. Number nine, unplugging from social media. It means reducing your screen time, having phone-free meals, observing the world around you, being present and focused on one task. This practice reduces stress, increases your productivity, helps you sleep better and be more focused. Number 10, gratitude. Our mind tends to focus on what we lack instead of appreciating tons of things that we do have. So how can we start practicing gratitude? My recommendation is to think of and write down three good things that happened to you today. And you can do it at the end of the day. And if you keep a journal, you can do it right there. In this way, during the day, you'll be focused on finding positive things around you instead of seeing negativity. Number 11, learning to say no. Our time is precious and limited. And more often than not, we don't value it. Saying no to things that are not your priorities is important to make time for what really matters. Two more to go, number 12, mindfulness. Most of the time we live like robots, going about our business on autopilot instead of observing and being present here and now. That's why we should start seeing everything with fresh eyes and finding beauty in mundane things and surroundings. I think it's a great idea to play tourist in your city. And last but not least, finding happiness in little things. So instead of thinking about everything we don't have, I think it's way better to focus and appreciate and enjoy the little things that we do have and we often take for granted. There are so many activities that are free and enjoyable, like for example, walking along the beach or hiking in the mountains or watching a series or having a cup of tea, listening to music, etc. So guys, that's it for today. If there is someone who has watched this video up to the very end, thank you very much. And please let me know in the comments below if you like this kind of videos focused on one exam topic. And of course, if you enjoyed this lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits and catch me on Instagram for more daily English. Thank you for joining me today and see you next Sunday. Ciao for now!